Most people in America are quite familiar with what is and isn't their rights, but at the same time, as a public citizen, we have some rights to freedom in other places. We have the right to use free net networks. It's true. It is also true that corporations, corporations can be curmudgeons and ruin that for me and you. But then it becomes discrimination. They were saying, okay, this one can use it for this, but that one can't use it for that. And it's a ridiculous waste of time because that's not what their employees are about. You see, employees in retail have a special relationship to the customers and what they perform there in their job duties. And job duties are very specific. And very, very, very rarely do local employees have the right to sit on their Wi-Fi networks to observe, to monitor, or to abuse guests around their situations there. We're just going to call it guests because we cannot guarantee that every person that enters a retail establishment is going to buy from you today. What we know from places like Panera and Starbucks and other commonly visited places like McDonald's and whatnot, or even an Office Max, is that people often commonly visit there, but don't often commonly purchase there. Sometimes we have business meetings there, but we've already just eaten with our family, so we're not going to order anything, but our friends and colleagues do. At the same time, however, we are usually customers for life because we still regularly go there. You see, the foolishness of young people is thinking, well, he's not a customer today, right, but I might be tomorrow or in the near future when my life is back on track and I have a dog in every way. At the present moment, it's foolish to have one. I don't want to because most likely the people that have been harming me would harm or kill that dog, and I couldn't take that. I have a good time minding after the local geese, and they openly do follow me. They openly come visit me. If I don't clap up for them, they're like, okay, he's dead. And they worry about that because they help to feed them and help to prepare them for their flight south, which is what they're doing right now. And they're collecting their congregations, which I don't think is quite the right word for them. But hey, I'm not an expert in geese and I'm not a vet. So here we go. And what I mean is a veterinarian. And openly, I'm just telling you a part of my life story. But I'm also trying to give you a little entertainment value so that you understand the authenticity of me. You see, in the marketing of your personal or professional brand, we have three letters to cover that. And a great particular author named David McNally talks about that in The Trusted Advisor, one of my favorite books that I found myself, I believe, or it's possible that an elderly sibling gave to me. I can't remember, but I think it was one I found myself in a half-price bookstore of some sorts. But the truth is what he talks about is the word act. An act is about authenticity, credibility, and transaction or transparency. Because when we get someone to act, it usually ends up in a transaction. And there you get the act in the word of transaction. But what we know about transactions in business communities, especially small business, is that it can take 14 to 16 interactions to create a value of trust for someone to invest in your business. At the same time, you might find that the targeted market is that can afford your business practice and afford purchasing from you at thousand to fourteen hundred dollars a pop might not actually be the people in your networking group and it might not even be the people that those people know one of the things that i talk about quite clearly in my marketing practice of training people to do better in business in my the soul of your company program is helping people to target the appropriate market for them so that they do not waste time not necessarily in relationship time but they don't really waste business time in groups and events that will never provide for them one sale. You see, it's marvelous to meet a bunch of, a bunch of business people. It's a lot to know, to get to know people, and I'm pretty well known by my face and by name and my unique business cards of a dragon with a flame that I designed completely through opportunities before me and through my strategic alliance partner that provides content or graphics for me. There are relationships and purchasing and liability agreements and licensing that goes along with that and no one else has the right to use that. We once had a situation that was a little awkward but we took care of it easily because that company know, knew me and knew I purchased regularly at $30, $100 a pop so they under, did not underappreciate me being a small business owner and whatnot. But if you're trying to use my logos, if you're trying to use my artwork, if you're trying to use my angel cards, you are going to get a lawsuit not only from me but for the companies that I might have borrowed a background from. But most of the time, I created my own work, or I split it apart and did it not like a jerk. Now, I don't have to tell you all the secrets of marketing, because it's not your industry, and I'm not going to help you to steal from me or other artwork, artwork and creative people like me. 
But in life, as in our work, we have liabilities, we have responsibilities, we have accountabilities, and we have laws that protect our work.